first time me making one of these um, videos here in the day um, in the morning before I start work and I've noticed that the dog is a little bit anxious she's actually shaking on my knee and um, she probably wouldn't be as anxious if she wasn't on my knee but I put her up here so that you could see her hey Nikki you're gonna look up and show us your eyeballs not really hey I'm gonna let her go down because she's not exactly comfortable here but she might wander around what I noticed, what the why I'm making this this video is because what I noticed is I noticed her start pacing and being a bit awkward um, around the space around me because I'm doing something that's out of the ordinary and my immediate reaction was to get annoyed with her feelings, um, to try and shut her feelings down, going no, don't worry, it's not a problem, we're not, it's nothing's happening, I'm just doing this, I'm just doing that, and I start talking to myself like that. Um, and then I noticed I was doing that. So uh, it's quite profound when these things happen because I'm, it, this sort of thing has been happening. This is, this is my pattern. So I have a change to my routine, which I'm already a little anxious about. There's a little anxiety in my body because it's like, how long is this going to take? How am I going to, am I going to know when to stop so that I get on with what I'm actually going to be doing on this day? Um, is it going to be worth it or am I wasting my time distracting myself, doing side projects and going down rabbit holes? There's a lot of narratives in my head. So I'm already, I'd say my anxiety in my body is starting to rise, which more than likely is sending off signals that especially my family, should they be here, and my fur baby, Nikki, can, can um, tap into. So there's that going on. And then noticing, I'm now noticing my body as I'm talking about this going tense. So I'm holding my foot in a kind of tense position, the kind of position where your toe might um, go dead. You know, I don't know what you mean, like when you stretch, stretch, stress position. I, I, I put myself in stress position subconsciously, so without knowing. And then um, I only wake up to the sensation when it becomes a little bit of uh, quite uncomfortable really so basically what's going on for me yes trying to make the video change in routine haven't had this routine in the morning in this house before that's obviously left the dog questioning what's going on what's going on are we going out for a walk are we going to sit in the garden these are things that we do in the morning am I going to get some more treats am I you know going to just have to get out of your way because you're doing something here what am I doing where am I so the dog's doing that and responding to me in the only way they know which is to get under my feet and be around me and look at me all the time trying to look for clues and the clues that I'm giving the dog is oh, I'm really anxious I'm actually now annoyed with your reaction and would you stop reacting to me which is unrealistic so I wanted to share this because it's actually the first time that I've caught myself in real time um trying to shut down another's feelings and in this case it was the dog I am comfortable with other people having feelings I've noticed when they own them so when other people become aware of their feelings and they own them and they explain what's going on for them I can relax but when there's tension in the air and things that are happening and I don't know and I can't explain it and I don't know how I fit into that I get tense and I might start asking, well, what's going on? What is wrong with you? What are you doing that? And I've, I've literally done the same here to the dog because the dog's feelings are upsetting me because now I'm feeling right now I've got another job to do. Not only am I going to make a video on a morning where I've got a limited time, blah, blah, blah. I've now got to deal with your emotions and I really don't have time for that because I've already got my own emotions. That's what's going on. <clears throat> now, now that I've settled down a little bit, the dog has settled down a little bit. They're sitting just off by my feet. I won't change the camera because probably doing that, but I'll send some other pictures. So I've settled down a bit. I am still feeling like an anxious ball of knots on the inside for sure. That's still going on, but I'm trying to embody I suppose you could say like the swan where it's smoother sailing on the outside and all the chaos is underneath so you wouldn't be able to tell because I'm thinking that what people can see what my dog can see is what they're responding to sure they're also responding potentially to other signals that I'm giving off because 
we tend as humans to focus on the visual, what you can see, but there's also the sound, the tonality of my voice. There's the body language, you know, where I am in space, how, how I'm moving through space, whether I'm moving at all. There's also the smells, you know, what sweat am I giving off, how much, how, how intense is my, my odour um, in any time. And that could give a, a, an animal like a dog who uses their sense of smell very strongly. It could give them clues as to what's going on. So while I recognise there's a lot of that that I can't change or control um, and I recognise there's a cost to me to try to fake it until I make it in that way. I understand that where I do have options, leaning into those options of consciously trying to calm the exterior is helpful to other people, including my pets. Now doing that for my pet then takes away the extra stress that was there, which was my pet fretting over what's going to happen and wondering what the routine is. So they've now decided, oh, you know, this isn't involving me. I'm just going to go to sleep by this person's feet or maybe back on my cushion or whatever. That has given me more space. So I guess it's really it's really cool. So the whole process has been really cool. I do want to come back now and just address my dismissing of other people's, including my pet's feelings. This is two things for me. I'm owning it entirely. I am aware that I do this as a pattern. It's not something that I value about myself. And it's something that is not synchronous with my values. I value open and honest communication. I value relationships where everybody can share their true feelings. At the same time, I understand the objective truth about the world that a lot of people, including pets who are responding, we respond to things outside of us that we don't understand in patterns that make sense to us. Not necessarily patterns that make sense full stop. I mean, one thing that could have happened this morning is my dog could have just gone among their merry way and either gone outside if they wanted or stayed in bed or kept begging me for whatever they wanted but no they are responding to me so there's a relationship element to that so I think that's important too so when we're in relationship with other people whether it's something that is actively turned on i.e we're in a conversation with one or two other people or we're not as opposed to say we're just in the same space but we're doing our own thing parallel playing in our own world whatever coexisting so when we're in an active relationship with other people the the we're tuned in on one level and even what we don't understand or can't explain from our patterns behavior whatever will affect us even and there's I'm sure you've understood this as well is that um, and, and had experiences when we're coexisting with other people say I'm in the kitchen stereotypical I mean I do I, I yeah I'll own it I'll go in the kitchen I'm a woman I go in the kitchen go figure when I'm in my woman kitchen cooking woman things for the man and the man is on the computer in the computer place if they start going oh god you know because something's gone wrong computers crashed the printer's got no paper bloody bloody blah, blah i'm gonna feel that so even though we're not in a relational active situation there he's doing his thing i'm doing my thing according to gender roles we still affect each other i've always understood that so here's i guess what the insight is for me today and why i'm making this video that is not news. That is not surprising. That's, duh, no-brainer. That's mansplaining, woman-splaining, explaining, would you, if you will, reality. Just how it is. It is how it is. But what was interesting to me this morning is the way I responded to incursions or in encroachment into my thing. So I have a need for this big safety bubble around me when I'm doing something or planning something because I'm in an attention tunnel or bubble. 
I'm trying to do this thing and it's taking all of myself to do this thing. So any externality that comes into or gets picked up by my attention bubble and then distracts me is triggering for me. And again, that word triggering is different to just being mildly annoying. Now, at the moment, because I am still recovering from mental illness and I'm sort of on the right side of it, but definitely still tired and not quite as resilient as I was, my window of tolerance is not wide open. I'm triggered by more things than I ordinarily would be. So it's discombobulating me. So when something else is going on in this morning where the dog is sort of fretting, it's sending me into a kind of heart palpitation. I know that won't always be the case and that's the case now because of the reasons I've just said what triggers me as in what it actually was if I sit back and think what happened there that's a clue as to what's happened to me or and what is different about me or who I am the fact that what triggered me this morning about the dog was her emotional response her fretting about what was going on in the routine The fact that triggered me is very telling. And that's been a problem for me the whole life, that I can't cope with other people's emotions. That comes in to what's called a psychosocial disability, which is very much part of my autism presentation. There's no doubt for me that my trouble with other people's emotions has got a grounding or has been fed by trauma other people having emotions that were dangerous, putting me in a position that was objectively, factually difficult, stressful, too much for me to bear, not once or twice, but again and again and again, not just one situation, but multiple situations. Some situations for people with autism might not be objectively stressful. The general day-to-day chatter in an office, the, you know, a light bulb being changed and it becoming brighter or duller or flickering, anything like that or not being able to find the stuff you need to complete a task, itchy clothing, whatever there could be all sorts of things that are not feeling great in your body and not quite knowing what's wrong and what's going on there's all sorts of things that go on and i've recognized that for myself as somebody who's autistic my window of tolerance can be extremely broad and accommodating to so much at certain times which is then confusing because at other times it can be almost closed and i can't really tolerate much at all but it is contextual. So when it when it's a relationship thing, when I'm talking about relationships, so something that's alive and me, just to make it clear what I'm talking about. So the dog and me, my husband and me, the children and myself, work colleagues and myself, whatever. In those situations, there's a psychosocial difference that I'm dealing with. I don't understand other people. Bottom line. Now that's an absolute. It's not always and never. Of course, I can understand people, but my default setting is, what do you mean? What do you want me to do? Are you talking to me? Do you need me? Is this display of emotion supposed to get my attention? I don't know what to do. I don't know the rules. I don't know the protocol. I don't know what you're asking because you're not asking. And it's all around that pragmatic um, communication so somebody's having emotions they're not you know in the background maybe as is was this small as was this morning as in a response to what I'm doing maybe not and I didn't necessarily invite that I'm not coming into the room and going hey everybody get out of my way because I'm going to do something I'm just getting on with my day and there's another thing as somebody who's autistic ADHD etc my attention bubble can be like a whole world. I go into my own world and it doesn't 
there's also impulsivity. So I can just decide to go into my own world or I can just find myself in my own world sometimes without that consciousness and that decision. So I create my little universe to get on with something and then I'm surprised when other people find that confusing, upsetting, inconvenient, disturbing of their peace, whatever. And then I get annoyed with their response to that because I have psychosocial difficulties. There's a history of trauma around emotions. I don't understand my own emotions. So it just feels like another job for a start. It's like, what's going on here? But this morning, something different happened and I caught myself in the act. And then what I did is I stopped. I took a minute with the dog and I explained to her what was happening. And what I was doing in that moment that I'm so, so proud of myself is remembering that I am in relationship with others, whether it's active or just incidental in that moment. They happen to have found themselves inconveniently in my world, my bubble or whatever. They're in the way or I'm in their way or I've disturbed their routine or whatever. They're confused. So I have a duty to these people, these animals, these, this situation that I love to explain myself to them if and when I can. At the very least, what I need to learn and what I'm working on is not hurting them, not punishing them for that confusion, that upset, that excitement maybe could be good. You know, when you've, when you've said the W-A-L-K thing to a pet and they get all excited and then the phone rings and then you're on the phone for an hour or you know, all of a sudden you get something else happen and you forget and the the poor animal is just going (gasps) excited, 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 you know, like that's, that's also an emotional roller coaster. So the fact that I am instigating emotional roller coasters in others around me, just like they are in me is news to me. Yeah, it's not, but it is because I have some control over that and that's the thing. So I'm making this video today because I recognized in real time pretty much what was going on and I snapped myself out of it. I was disappointed in myself that I was invalidating and trying to brush off and also squash the feelings of some other thing that was affected by me and my sudden decision to change the layout of the house, sit in a different place and make a video that I've never done before in this way at this time. Of course, that's confusing. Of course, that's confusing for other people. My animal, my pet. But stopping and explaining it and thinking about it really reduced some of that anxiety that I was feeling in my chest, but it hasn't made it go away. I'm still anxious. So that's the last thing I wanted to leave. So my ability to recognize in the moment and then feel a bit bad that I was dismissing these feelings and whatever, that felt a little bit... I felt a little bit ashamed of myself because I am welcoming of other people's emotions. But like I said, on my terms, it's I've had to I have to own that. I like them on my terms or I like it to be explicitly communicated. But here's the rub in that that I'm realizing when we're triggered or when we're confused, when we've got strong emotional um, when we're it's coming not from our conscious minds where we're like "Hmm, I think I'm going to get excited in a minute oh yeah here it comes hey I'm excited you know that can be the case sometimes in life but most often you just oh what's this I'm feeling oh yeah it's excitement it's happiness it's stress it's anxiety or you can't even name it depending on your emotional intelligence and literacy So yeah, really happy with myself today. I think that's a big step, lots more steps to go, but it's a start.